Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today we're gonna do a DIY Dollar Tree blessed butt bunny, but basically we're gonna make a pom-pom bunny. And we're gonna use, that's right, a cotton mop. We're only gonna use 10 strands and we're only gonna use from the mop head. And then to make his base, we're gonna use the two carrots left over from this, from yesterday's project, but I'll tell you about options. And then I decided to do this whole project because I found this gray felt. These are pan protectors. But if you have felt laying around and you can make this bunny he's kind of like more white than gray anyway so you know do what you want <laughs> it it's it's time to stay home and craft i'm just going to give you guys some ideas and then you go and run with it with what you have okay so basically i'm taking 10 pieces of this cotton twine um cotton mop excuse me each one is made up of four or five strands of cotton so what I'm going to do is just take an old spool. This just happens to be an old ribbon spool from ribbon I used recently. I glued the two pieces together. I ripped off the top and bottom, glued them together. And I cut like, I cut like from four o'clock to seven o'clock out. <laughs> and you don't want to cut straight in half because then your pom-pom will start, you start to go on your pom-pom sides and stuff. Now, the ancient technique from when I was young is you would actually wrap all of this around a string that you would already plant in the pom-pom. I never had luck with that because I always would catch the pom-pom string. So I, I'm going to show you a needle technique that we'll do in a minute here. So basically just take your time to unravel all of these. You don't really take a lot of time. Um, we're not going to end up using all 10 for the one. No, we are for two. I'll show you what I'm doing. Basically, we're going to do is we're going to make two half pom-poms. So we're gonna repeat everything you see twice. So with half of the strings, which is, you know, roughly 40 or so strings, or however many it takes to fill up your, your little thing there, um, you're gonna go ahead and wrap. Now, because this isn't one continuous piece of yarn, um, if it's, we want it to start and stop at the top, which is the wide part of the arch. Uh, basically, it's a rainbow, the top of the rainbow is red. I don't know. Is the top of the rainbow purple? What color is the top of your rainbow? But anyway, <laughs> that's where you want your shrinks to start and end. Because that's the part we're going to cut off. Now, I if I had a couple that were like little pieces above that, I would just cut them. Hold the previous string down. You can really wrap as much as you want. Um, it's just that it's a little bit more difficult to get off when it's really, really full at this size. So I always find it easier to make two halves of the pom-pom. So basically you're gonna make this twice. And basically there are two pom-poms, but I really want my bunny to be really nice and thick. So once I have that, I'm just gonna take a skewer and I'm just doing a skewer because I have terrible dexterity lately. <laughs> I'm feeding this skewer up against the cardboard um, basically, I'm guiding, making a guide for my needle. What are we going to use for a needle? A piece of wire. Um, this is just a piece of cotton twine. Don't use this cotton string because I tried to do it with the cotton string. And when you go to tighten it, it ends up breaking because it's a very, very fragile. So just use a piece of cotton twine and thread it underneath. And then you want to tie it into a knot. And then slide off your cardboard and cut your pom-pom halves and half. Now this is a very large pom-pom at this point, but it's also very like fly away or not very dense. That's why we wanna cut it down. So we're gonna cut it down to make it a nice tight pom-pom. But before we do that, make two, tie them together with the cotton twine strings that are left over. And it's, I'm actually gonna even add some hot glue to keep the centers pressed in. But each cent, each each pom-pom has two cotton twine pieces left. I basically tied what would be like the left one to the left one and the right one to the right one. Add a little hot glue because I kept feeling like it was falling apart. So I just stuck a shot of hot glue down the middle where all the strings were. And I just held that center together a little bit. But that's just option. And then just trim to fit. <laughs> you basically just want to keep cutting it down until you get a pom-pom that'll hold together. Now you could stop here and you can make a really fluffy bunny. Um, you can make a very hairy, long hairy bunny. He'd be cute too. Um, you can make several of these and if you want to put them on a rug or hang them from a decoration, I just think that this cotton mop really does have some potential 
to anywhere you could put yarn, I feel like is a good place to put, you could use this cotton mop. Now it doesn't fray like yarn because it does have like a dense core. That's what keeps your floor clean. <laughs> but, um, but you could comb it out if you wanted to. It just won't comb out like the cotton twine will or anything. Okay. So as you see, I'm just fluffing it. I kept grabbing a couple of pieces and whacking it around and trimming it and whacking it around, trimming it. Do that until you're happy with it. Now I'm going to take the smallest one of these pot protectors. I want to let you know, I'm very excited about these pot protectors, but I really only need the big ones and the medium ones. So I have the small ones to go crafting with. I've taken two of the spines, I don't know, star points, what would you call them? And I folded them on top of each other and then folded them in half to create sort of an ear. And then I, when I open them up again, you can trim the one ear to be the same size as the other ear. Now the ears, I'm going to change the shape. You can make whatever shape ears you want. You can make the ears point down if you want to. And then we're going to do the same thing to make feet. And you can do whatever shape feet you want to. <laughs> um, the bunny feet are, it's all subjective. Not everybody likes big bunny feet. Not everybody likes, you know, uh, long, round, fat, skinny bunny feet, you know, whatever it is. And the same thing with the ears. Um, we're not going to put the ears on until after we put the bunny on the sign because we want to make sure we can see them um, and then they're in the right angle. But what we're doing is just taking a scrap of white felt and cutting out toes. You can actually do this with a white paint pen or some white paint. Um, if you want to, or tiny white beads would be really cute as well. And we're just going to put on three toes. Some of the bunny feet and some of the, like on Pinterest, sometimes the bunny feet have like the pad of the foot. Sometimes they have four toes. I don't know. It's again, it's up to you. It's a design option. And you can see that the pom-pom isn't actually gray, but I thought it was cute to have almost like contrasting. I was afraid if I used a color that was way too similar that I would kind of lose it you know you would lose the ears um, in the background there same with the feet and now it's just time to glue each tiny little toe on <laughs> I'm using the barest amount of glue um, basically I'm rubbing the hot glue gun on the little um, toe pad parts I don't know what I'm saying do you know what I'm saying and then I actually had a little extra glue that when I was assembling it, I was like, this bunny needs a pedicure because he looks like he had long toenails, but it was really a glue string. So you're going to repeat that with both feet. And then I didn't like the shape of them afterwards after I got the toes on, so I trimmed it down. And then I glued them on. I have picked the best part of the, you know, pretty pom-pom forward. And I just glued them on right at the heels. I didn't glue the, glue the whole foot down, and I'll tell you why in a minute because we're going to glue it to the sign. Now, I keep a jar of parts. I keep a, lot, a jar of parts, a box of parts, and a bag of parts. Because you never know when you're going to need parts. And I had these two little pom-poms, and they were way smaller than I needed a tail to be. So I cut their existing glue pieces off, and I glued them together. And I made a big puffy pom-pom. Now, they had a little bit of glittery string on them, so I just trimmed them down so it wouldn't be too glittery of a tail. And then I just glued it on between his feet, basically just above the heels, but between them. And now I'm going to set him aside and we're going to work on our sign. Now I mentioned in the beginning, if you don't have that sign with two carrots on it, you could cut your carrots out of foam board. You can cut your carrots out of cardboard. You can pick something besides carrots. Um, I just thought it was a cute play on words that this little tiny bunny was on this giant carrot and it said blessed because he was so lucky that he was eating this giant carrot. So that's it. <laughs> so um, I'm peeling the paper off of this carrot because we're using both pieces and we're going to create almost like a sandwich board street sign. You know what a sandwich board is that they put out in front of Starbucks that tells you the specials. Um, so you're you're going to need to remove the paper. Um, this paper was super loose, by the way. As you can see, I took off the, one of the whole words, almost like the whole piece by itself, just a little bit of scraps. Now I'm removing the cardboard from the back piece. You just use a little water, wet the cardboard, and give it a scrape, and then you go ahead and let it dry. And the reason we're doing that is because these carrots, um, 
are like mirror images of each other. So for them to line up perfectly, we're going to have to put that carrot in the back with what would have been the cardboard facing out. Um, the other one, we're going to work on the back of it. And you'll see if you actually have these that the two of them have like almost the same hand. So what I did was I stood them up how I wanted them to be as a sandwich board and I marked in two spots where I want to connect them. Um, I actually marked in three spots, but I ended up only using two. Um, we're going to use, this is Waverly's chalk paint in pumpkin and Folk Arts chalk paint in Spanish moss. And we're going to use a little white as well. Okay. But before we do that, we put them up against each other and I just took the piece of flat jute that was actually holding these on to the original sign and I cut it in half just to connect the two carrots. The first thing I wanted to do is to um, paint the green. I wanted to do that so when I go over the finished edge with the orange it gives it some more dimension. I know that, that sounds weird but it does. And I'm not doing anything fancy I'm just mixed a little white with the green I'm um, doing around the edges and I decided to paint on the inside because you can kind of see between them if you're standing on top of it. I just put a light coat on the inside. I didn't shade the inside like I'm going to shade the outside. Um, I just did a rough, um, a, a light coat of green. Now I'm going to take the straight green and I'm just going to go straight and create these variations of color. Nothing fancy. Now I'm taking the orange and the white and mix the color that you want. It does create a little light orange or a dark peach, um, but you go ahead and create the orange that you want, depending on your decor. But I am picking a shade that's lighter than I'm going to be finished with because I'm going to add the dark striations to it. Um, you know, carrots have those sort of lines that go, you know, the grooves and the, and the eyes of the carrot. Um, so we're going to create those with the darkness. I've noticed that my paint was starting to thin out, uh, thicken up. Um, the orange is old because I had it since Halloween and it's just started to thicken up. So I added a little bit of water to it. And now I'm going in with the straight dark orange and I'm just brushing the variations back and forth and creating some sort of, I don't know, dimension to it. Um, you could go ahead and add those little black lines that you sometimes see on carrots, but I knew I wanted to put a word on here and I didn't want it to get, you know, get in the way of that. So the word we decided to use was blessed. And I'm showing you here, these stickers are from the Target dollar spot. I got them uh, a, f a few months back. They were $3 for the, all of those stickers. Um, and I pulled them out because I didn't know if this was going to actually fit well enough for you to know it said blessed. But this is just the sticker from the Dollar Tree that says grateful, thankful, blessed, wall to stick sticker. And I had blessed just sitting there. And I thought it would be a really cute play on words, you know, with the large carrot. I explained that already. <laughs> so what I did was I cut it out really close just so I could see where if it would fit. And then I put it on there. And then I ended up having to trim off like the top of the D, the top of the B and the top of the L um, and this way I feel like it says blessed the easiest like you could still see it um, does look like it's uh, run off or maybe wrapped around the carrot um, but I just knew that I also wanted it to not be in the way of the little guy so I've taken another piece of that jute from the hanging portion and I glued it between the two other pieces of jute but like on the opposite side what we're going to do is we're going to create like a stopper is really what it is uh, the sandwich board the top two pieces are going to be the hinge and this is going to be the stopper that's going to keep it from opening up all the way okay you will be able to fold this if you glue the bunny properly you'll be able to fold this and put it away for your holiday decor um, so I'm just adding glue to the tops of the two carrots not both like not between them um, so this way you can still fold it up. And then I sat the little guy on there and I put his little feet over the edge. And then I was like, oh, God, I add his ears now. But I probably would have waited to add his ears until I actually got him in place. Because the one on the left went in a little crooked. But, hey, such is life. Maybe he's twitching. Maybe he's excited. I don't know. <laughs> so now I'm just taking a stiff bristle paintbrush and I'm fluffing his pom-pom up. Because every time I touched him, it would squish down. And I glued his little toes to the back of the carrot. And that's it. The back of his toes to the carrot. 
and that's it. So I hope you guys really enjoyed this. If you make any parts of this, let me know. I hope I inspired you to do something with something you have. Um, scraps, use the scraps. And if you haven't yet, click subscribe. And when you do, a little bell will pop up. When you ring that bell, YouTube will let you know whenever I upload a new video. And don't forget to share it with friends and family. Anybody you know who's interested in making any of this and give it a thumbs up if you like it and leave a comment with any questions that you have. And as always, you guys take care. God bless. And we'll see you next time. Bye.